and welcome back to Otaku No Video as always. Thank you so much for joining me. Where today I am going to fight. No. Uh, we are going to look at Boogie Pop Phantom and Serial Experiments Lane. Two shows that are often mentioned in the same breath. Or breath, rather. And let's look and see how they're similar and how they're different. And I think they're, they're similar on some surface levels, um, then they're different the further down you go. But then when you get down to their core, there's some interesting similarities again. Um, both shows are certainly similar in overall genre. <clears throat> they are, I think you could call them psychological thriller or psychological horror series. That certainly fits them better than action or, uh, you know, comedy. Uh, they both have sci-fi elements to them. Both contain deliberately unexplained elements and plot points and other mysteries that are not fully explored in the shows. Um, they also use a, a very muted color palette, Boogie Bot Phantom arguably more so than Lane, but definitely they both have that very distinct visual style. Uh, and of course they both come out at the, around the same time, so they both look similar in terms of uh, overall sort of animation art style. Delving deeper, Boogie Pop is obviously mostly episodic, while Lane centers on the character of Lane and the story she's involved with. Also, Boogie Pop Phantom is a study in different philosophies. It also sits in judgment of them pretty darn clearly. Boogie Pop is about saying, here are different ways of looking at the world, and are they right or wrong? Are they useful and effective? Lane does show us Lane's actions and the outcomes of that, um, but even when Lane screws up, it feels to me the show is much more empathetic to Lane than the students who screw up in Boogie Pop, right? Um, Lane is trying her best with what she has, and we understand why she's doing what she's doing, why she has the reactions she has. Um, Lane feels more human than a lot of the characters in Boogie Pop Phantom, oddly enough. It should also be pointed out, a lot of Boogie Pop's enigmatic elements are explained in spin-off media or just other media within the franchise, like the manga, the novels, and the live-action movie, <clears throat> while Lane is basically it. You know, there was a PlayStation game, but that's not the same lane. It's really a different story. Um, and there are the art books, but they don't really give you much more detail. They don't really explain a lot of the stuff in the show. So you really have to understand it through that, whereas with Boogie Pop, you can, you can, you can understand a lot of the explanations of what Boogie Pop is, um, you know, where a lot of these characters came from, what's the deal with Echoes, all the, that stuff is explained at some point later on. And Boogie Pop was you know, designed that way. It was assumed that you were familiar with this franchise. Lane stands alone, more or less. Um, however, at their core, both shows are about the importance of our actions. Lane says this line that I think is, is really central to the show. A thing that isn't remember, remembered is a thing that doesn't exist. This further implies that the memories we make are of paramount importance to our existence. They inform us. Not necessarily everything, that's the classic nature versus nurture argument, right? But that is very important. Similarly, characters in Boogie Pop end up in a variety of good or bad places based on the philosophies they have and the choices they make as a result. So their behavior, and thus the memories they make, end up defining them and end up deciding where, you know, whether they live or die, basically. I think at their core, both shows are about fundamentally those same themes, about exploring what we do and, and the results of what we do. I think it's also remarkable that both shows 
also feature tragedy and darkness. They're both dark shows, fundamentally, and some, some very nasty things happen in the show. But they both end on hopeful notes. The ultimate, without getting into spoilers, the ultimate end of Boogie Pop Phantom is that there is hope. We have a defender. Things get dealt with one way or the other. The ultimate end of Lane is that Lane figures out what she needs to do and, and does it. And that has consequences and it's not, it's not perfect for everyone, but it was the right thing to do, all things considered. And the right thing has been defended. I think the shows also come at their, 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 their jobs, I'm sorry, I think both of the shows come at their themes from a similar heart. Um, they're both reaching out to people, and they're both exploring what it means to be human, what it means to, ha to be who we are. Uh, in, in Boogie Pop's case, and really in Lane's part as well, it says, if you are a human plus something else, what does that change about you? How much of you is, is are you human anymore? And if so, what does that tell us about being human? Um, about our choices, about the fact that we're all different in different ways, Thus, we all have, you know, or that difference does not kill our responsibilities. It does not some, suddenly make us a mutant freak to which all rights and responsibilities do not apply, right? Indeed, if you are different, you almost have a responsibility to make use of those differences, to do what needs to be done, do the right thing, no matter what you can or can't do. Um, and I think that's really, really important. Um, I also really like the fact that both shows are uncompromising in the sense that characters who are very young are given enormous responsibilities, are given enormously powerful abilities, and they have to deal with that. They just have to do the right thing. Um, sorry. Congratulations, you know, this is, this is where you are. And it's one of the things I really like about this and anime in general. Um, it says that 14-year-olds still got to handle a lot of stuff. And yeah, it may seem unfair, but being 14 doesn't mean that you don't have a brain. You know, it doesn't mean that you can't handle difficult things. It means it'll be hard for you. Sure, it's hard for adults too. But that's just life, and so you're gonna have to deal with that, right? Um, so that is what I think are some of the similarities and differences between Boogie Pop and Lane. There's some structural differences. Um, there are some uh, some commonalities as well, but I, I think they, they complement each other well. Um, obviously, they're made by different people, but I, th I think exploring these themes from these two perspectives um, is enormously helpful. And um, I think if, you, if you're interested in either show, I'd recommend checking the other one out as well uh, to see where it goes. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. Um, this is the final video I've done so far on Boogie Pop Phantom, uh, part of my Boogie Pop Phantom project. If you'd like me to explore more about Boogie Pop Phantom, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I would definitely like to explore more, but this is these are all of the things that I have gathered that folks have wanted to hear about or wanted to explore about Boogie Pop Phantom. So again, I hope this is useful. Please let me know if you want more. And until next time, I hope you watch more interesting anime. Thank you.